Welcome back to another Twinkle Tips Friday video, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Display. Let's get started. Well, guys, the reason why I wanted to do this video this week is because it's something that I really haven't touched on a whole lot. I've mentioned it in a number of the webinars, but I don't think that many people have actually seen what this can really do to your show or to your layout. Right over there is a Megatree Star. Maybe you don't have as many pixels on your Megatree Star as this one is, but you can take this prop kind of to the next level. And one of the things that many people don't consider is that with that many pixels, you can create some designs with inside that model, the submodels, and really bring out some interesting features and show off that star in a different way than what you're used to. So what I want to do is I want to go into the submodel dialog. So here you see we've created a couple of these submodels already. Now, uh, I don't want to go through all of the specifics and details, but just know that if you click this link above me here, uh, that we'll go through and teach you about submodels and so forth. We've already done a number of videos on this, but I really want to uh, show you a couple of new things that have been added into the submodel dialog, which you may not know about, and we'll briefly walk through here and show you why it's interesting to have these, especially for this model, the star, because it's going to make it easy for you to create submodels. These are like the insides of each of the peaks, the points on the star. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you have an outline, which is obvious. It's but now what about outlining each individual point? I thought that would be a great idea, so I created those as well. So here's this interesting new addition that has been added in and that helps you create some models rather easily. Let's go ahead and just, uh, I've selected the bottom, it says bottom there, and I'm hovering over top of the node ranges. If I right click, there's this function here that does something called symmetrizes or uh, a rotation around the prop and it finds like submodels if you've already created them. So with this submodel, what I want to do is I want to duplicate it, but I want to do it five times because the star has five points, so it's going to have five pretty much equal settings on the inside of it. And X lights can symmetrize it, uh, and if we change this number from eight, we'll change it to the number five, click OK. Now you see that we've symmetrized this and we've got a whole submodel. I have another couple sets of models that I want to duplicate. I created this hook right and a hook left. And I want to use this for mapping some effects from maybe some of the high definition props into the star. Let's go ahead, hover over top here, symmetrize this five times. And now we've got ourselves some hook right. Let's go on the hook left here. Let's go on the hook left here and hover over top of this, symmetrize, right click and symmetrize, and we'll do five. And uh, there's five with the hooks going the opposite direction. And let's see, we have a couple rings here in the center that I just drew out. Those are real simple. Now what, what are we gonna do? The, this is the big question. How do we deal with this neat little addition that we put here? If we go over here onto the layout here, under the model layout, what we can do is we can begin adding these into our existing submodel groups when we're mapping our sequences or when we're programming, where these will get automatically programmed as we sequence the show that we're doing the song for, right? If we say point one through five, what would that be a good fit for? So let's go ahead and begin adding some of these submodels into some of our existing groups. Let's do outlines for point number one through five. Now I'm holding the shift key and they're all, all together there. I'm gonna right click, uh, add selection to existing group. And we'll go ahead and put this on the spinner big arms. So we'll go down to the spinner, spinner big arms, right there, right there. Spinner big arms, click okay. Okay, let's go ahead and add in the um, arms inner, arms inner, that's that's kind of those new ones that we just did, those arms inner, um, all, we'll do the arms inner all, uh, and we'll put that right click and add selection to group uh, for snowflakes, SN, snowflakes, we'll do that for the snowflake arms. All right, click on this again. We'll go ahead and put ring one and two with 
Let's do the add selection to existing groups, snowflakes. Let's see, snowflake rings, we'll say that. See how they're hit, uh, highlighted with those as well? So now you know that they're in there. So let's go to the outline next. We'll put the outline, let's put that in, add selection to the snowflake tips. We'll do that. Finally, we're gonna go through, finally we'll go through and uh, we'll do the hooks right and left. We'll go with the hooks left next and we'll uh, create, a. Uh, we'll add selection to the PPD wreath. Let's do some of that, right? The CC or the C clockwise. And so there, that's lit up with the PPD wreath there. And what if we do one more the opposite way, hooks right, right click, add selection to group, and spiral clockwise. How's that? So there we go. We've got a, a significant number of uh, groups that we put this into, and now the goal is to see what happens whenever you haven't sequenced the prop. Let's just go ahead and uh, create a uh, new sequence. We'll go ahead and select this one right here, the song. Let's go, go and click done. And let's go ahead and get started with mapping a little bit now. Um, let's go import, import effects, and we'll look for Hark the Herald. So we'll go ahead and we're going to, since I'm mapping from one layout into another, I'm gonna click the auto map button. Now remember the groups that we added this to, we added this with the clockwise spiral and clockwise uh, counterclockwise spiral. We added snowflake tips, rings, arms, and spinner big arms. So there's plenty of sequencing in those areas that will help kind of exemplify uh, the extra sequencing on the star. Let's go ahead and click OK, and we'll go ahead and render the sequence out. I'm gonna go ahead and make the new master the master and that'll order it where the star is all the way at the bottom with the mega tree. So here we are. We'll go ahead and we will play the sequence. Let's have a look at it. There you have it guys i hope this video was helpful i think it sure turned out really well i wanted to share with you that it could take a couple of steps to go from a plain and boring mega tree star into a high density prop that maybe you hadn't considered that it's time to give it a fair upgrade guys thank you for joining us in this tips and tricks video just so you know there's an awesome little announcement today we're running a Labor Day weekend sale. You can get a significant number of sequences that are the original layout sequences, and you can get them for $30 a piece. Go check out the PPD sequence store. Look for the little sale icon on any one of the sequences that have them, and those songs are on sale. Go check it out. If you haven't done yet, so hit the big like button. I hope you liked the video, and if you didn't subscribe to the channel, please do so. And by the way, if you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where we do one awesome sequence each and every month and you get to spend your time focusing on building your holiday layout show the way that you want to do it. Guys, thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now.